So what is there to say about a distribution of the quality that Linux Mint can put out? Linux Mint 21.1 is in beta and it will very soon be released to the public at large. And honestly, Linux Mint is one of these projects that has been able to provide release after release on a long-term support Ubuntu base and provide quality iterative updates on a very dependable schedule. And it continues to put the desktop user front and center in terms of their development focus and overall polish that they put into their operating system. It's one of the few projects that you can point to that over the years hasn't changed its goals. When you look at a desktop like Ubuntu, it has gone through several iterations and its priorities have shifted from the desktop to the server and internet of things and that kind of thing. And then Fedora, remains a fantastic uh, distribution, but is ultimately a test bed for Red Hat. It always has been, always will be. But Linux Mint, on the other hand, knows exactly what it is and manages to provide useful updates for its users time and time again. And surprisingly, without much in the way of controversy or kickback along the way, which is difficult to do in the open source world. So what is new in Linux Mint 21.1? That's what we're going to have a bit of a look at today. This isn't so much a review or a should you install this or what is the objective merits of this particular system. This is more about what's new, my first impressions, and I guess where Linux Mint's strengths lie in the grand scheme of things. So let's jump into it. All right, so first of all, you're gonna notice that I am actually using some uh, display scaling here because while this is a 1080p display, what I realized was that uh, it is a lot easier for you at home to watch this when it's scaled up, when the UI is scaled up, so everything isn't one-to-one -one tiny. Uh, so that's something that I'll endeavor to do moving forward just to make it a bit clearer to see what's going on on the screen. But Linux Mint 21.1 is an iterative update to an already iterative release in Vanessa version 21. So this is Vera and some of the surface level changes are very apparent. So some of the first things that the release notes are quick to point out is the fact that the overall uh, default Mint theme has undergone some pretty significant changes. Not so much that you'd notice uh, just by glancing the desktop, but they've made the colors much more vibrant. So that you'll notice with the default color selection has shifted from the sort of the d darker green to a much more uh, bright blue. And the funny thing with this is that, uh, the, or at least the logic that's that's been explained as to why they've shifted the default color is that it is seen to be a more universally loved color than green. It seems kind of a weird surface level thing, but I actually appreciate it. Here's why. Because most UIs utilize the color blue, fairly peaceful color overall. That's what people have come to expect from a lot of UI elements. So the fact that you get this uh, default blue and it's a pretty vibrant one, you do have a pretty vibrant green there that you can pick from as well. It is a few shades darker than what the uh, legacy green used to be. Now, if you want to dig up the old colors and want to make your system uh, or keep your system looking exactly the same, chances are if you've already customized your system, it, once you receive the update for Linux Mint 21.1, it'll just roll straight on through, it won't change anything. But what you'll notice is that if you go into themes, you'll be able to find the legacy themes for the Mint Y uh, theming, and you'll also find the legacy icons, because you'll also notice that the folder icons are no longer a particular color based on the icon color that you've chosen, they now are a consistent manila folder color, which remains more consistent, I guess, with the overall skeuomorphic design of having a folder. They're all manila colored, and then they just have little ribbons on them depending on what accent color you've chosen. Makes it a lot easier, and, uh, and I think the desktop is better off for it. It gives a much cleaner first impression, and I appreciate that. Also some changes just to the way that they highlight files here. They don't uh, tinge the icon color as well. They just do a highlight if you hover over it, and then they, uh, and then they colorize the, the label there. So all of those are good changes, and you'll also notice the default cursor is much more modern, I guess, more, more modern. It's got a bit of a beach ball scrolly effect, which is kind of nice as well. A uh, bit reminiscent of the Mac OS beach ball, but 
definitely distinct. And I appreciate the, the attempt to make Linux Mint's branding a little more specific to Mint. Just the fact that they have this selection of, of look and feel that still feels consistent across all these colors and dark mode is really, really nice. They've made some useful additions to the driver manager so that now it will allow you to install drivers from the USB installation media and the process around that is a bit more robust so that you don't end up with a balk system. It also has a way to more elegantly manage NVIDIA drivers and secure boot so that if you have a system that has secure boot enabled, you can leave that enabled without it causing any issues. And significantly to the update manager, they finally added Flatpak support uh, so that the Flatpak updates that are available for the system get surfaced in the update manager, which is a really nice addition. So any Flatpak apps that get installed, the updates will become available and will be displayed in the update manager. Uh, also worth mentioning a big criticism that many of the, uh, the at least the, the people here on YouTube have had about Linux Mint for some time is the fact that the software manager feels really old quite frankly. And uh, while we haven't got a complete overhaul by any stretch, we do have a few design tweaks to try and mitigate the oldness of this software manager. So first of all, you're gonna notice that a lot of the spacing between the tiles has kind of been ironed out. And I was noticing some funky behavior a little bit with uh, some of these tiles resizing, um, but I believe the, the layout that you see in front of you now is what it's designed to be. And, uh, and you'll notice that there's a lot more sort of showcased options down below here. So they've got more information available for a carousel of apps that are shown here on the homepage. And then also more impressively, I guess, they're starting to take on some of the feedback that, uh, that people have given regarding being able to have details regarding which version of the app they have available to install. So for example, with something like Hedge Wars, you can take it from the system's repositories, or you have a drop down to choose the flat pack version, and then it will try and bring in some of the details around that, including version number, size, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what I'm interested to see is the fact that the rating scores are very much tied to the uh, Linux Mint system package uh, display. Whereas when you switch over to the FlatHub, some of these uh, star ratings remain, but the user ratings in terms of the overall star rating and other reviews that are available uh, disappear from the FlatHub version. Um, aside from that, what I would say above everything is that while these small visual tweaks uh, and, and tweaks to the software manager and update manager do help uh, help modernize Linux Mint a little bit. There is still a ways to go with truly modernizing this venerable desktop Linux distribution. Uh, now, I say venerable as if that's a, uh, that's a bad thing. It is a good thing because there is a community that is being really faithfully served by this project. And, uh, and many people will be more than happy singing the praises of Linux Mint, not only for people transitioning over from Windows, even though it targets that demographic perfectly, but also for Linux users that have been around for a long time, have seen a lot of distros come and go and continue to appreciate the quality and iterative updates that Mint provide. The thing is though, at the end of the day, we are still facing a Linux landscape where Wayland is quickly becoming the default and the Mint team are strangely quiet on the Wayland front. Uh, and small things like uh, touchpad gestures, integration of pipe wire as an audio standard. Again, not sure if these things are being worked on or even if they've been Im implemented. Let me know down below if stuff like pipe wire has already happened and I just kind of missed it. But these are sort of some of the newer tech that is coming into the desktop Linux landscape for the better, I would argue. And, uh, and Linux Mint needs to come to the party here if it wants to be able to stay, I guess, competitive in that quickly developing landscape. But I think overall as a project and look, as a poking around with the latest beta of a soon to be released Linux Mint 21.1, this project is fantastic. And if you are looking to recommend a desktop Linux distribution to anyone who's looking to try out Linux for the first time, this is one of the best ones out there. And even for medium and more advanced users can appreciate the attention to detail, consistency and quality that the Linux Mint team continue to provide. So let me know in the comments section down below if you could put a feature 
in Linux Mint, what would it be? My stuff is always very niche and I don't understand and, and I appreciate that not everyone wants to see a heads up display men menu a la Unity where, I mean, for example, let me just jump out of here, uh, where I can, you know, toggle between a launcher and and finding menu options with a pop-up thing like that. But even having a spice like that in cinnamon would be kind of cool. I know there was one that was worked on there for a little while. Anyway, what would your feature be that you would want to see to help modernize Linux Mint even further? It's fantastic that the fresh coat of paint, improvements to the update manager, improvements to the default apps that ship with Linux Mint to kind of decouple it from GNOME and, uh, and other improvements continue to make Linux Mint a very compelling option moving into the future. But let me know what would you change next and uh let's let's keep supporting this fantastic project see you on the next one